Greetings, true believers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, before the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there was the Marvel Animated Universe. And it all began with Marvel Ultimate Avengers, which I reviewed back in Series 2. All of which beating about the bush brings us very neatly to today's subject, which is also from the Marvel Animated Universe. The Invincible Iron Man! Released in 2007, The Invincible Iron Man is a slightly different take on the origin of the Golden Avenger. In this version, Tony Stark finds more than he bargained for in the ruins of an ancient kingdom, and uses his top secret exosuit projects to combat an ancient evil. Receiving a decidedly mixed response on release, and arriving even before the first Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, is this animated movie a shining knight, or a dent in old Shellhead's pride? So strap on your rocket boots and fire up your repulsors, cause we're taking the fight to the malevolent Mandarin with... The Invincible Iron Man! Our movie begins on an archaeological site in China. Rhodey is heading up a team to raise an ancient site above ground level. And Mr. Tony promised us I know. But there are forces that would rather not see this happen. And why? Well, you know, your basic ancient evil destined to reawaken in the present day. <sighs> Damn lazy forebears. You know, I've got half a mind to go back into the past myself and sort out these things for good. In the US, Tony Stark takes a call. So what happened? We can't defend ourselves, that's what happened. And a significant hit from Stark Industries Board of Directors. Mr. Chairman, I motion that Tony Stark be relieved of his duties. And I back at the dig site, the lifting is underway. But those who prefer the Mandarin stay buried are having none of it, and attack! And worse, when Tony flies out to investigate, he's captured by the insurgents! <laughs> so much for Stark technology, if a single RPG can take out one of his tanks. Shoulda bought British! And his heart is badly wounded. <laughs> Strange happenings are afoot at the dig site. Now then, those rings the insurgents spoke of. They're all an interested party needs to bring about the resurrection of the Mandarin. You know the basic thing, thousand years of darkness, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria, etc etc etc. Back at the camp, Tony talks tech. You when you look like Frankenstein. How about we find a way to streamline this? And the elementals hit London. Back at the insurgents' camp, Tony gets a history lesson. And a nasty shock. Oh, now that's just rude. When are these villains going to learn about positive reinforcement? Probably never, since they're all villains at all, actually. <laughs> oh well, they're lost. This is all he needs to spur him to work. But Head Insurgent Wong Chu wants results. Demonstrate your device, now! Hey, no problem. What he gets instead is put out of our misery. <laughs> and none too soon either. I mean, you can't protect the world by acting like a supervillain, you know? All of which gives Tony the time he needs to suit up. And escape. But a happy homecoming, this is not. Luckily, Pepper Potts has got his back. How did you two sneak into the lobby? Remind me to move my office to the first floor. And we learn just how busy Tony has been. Yes, in this version, Tony's already been working on the suits for a while. 
But don't get your hopes up. Most of them don't get more than just a cameo. And so, Iron Man heads out to face off against the Mandarin's lackeys. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. Despite his taking out of the fire elemental. One suit change later, Iron Man is back for round two. And two more elementals go down. The old momentum play. Classic technique, that. They think you're beat. You do something unexpected. Momentum pulls your two opponents into each other. Bam! Two birds with one stone. But Rock beats everything. And Shellhead barely escapes. Now, due to Tony being accused of dealing arms to these Chinese insurgents, he's had to sneak around to get access to his Iron Man suits. And now, both Rhodey and Pepper have got themselves arrested covering for him. So now he's got no access to his suits. Some genius, eh? Because of this, there's only one more suit available. Tony takes it and heads to the temple to put an end to the Mandarin before he returns. <laughs> ha! Crunch! That's how you take out an Earth Elemental. In the sky. Oh well, whatever works. But oh dear, Li Mei was bound to the Mandarin all along. Yeah, let's skip this culturally insensitive terracotta army battle. I don't know what, or even if, they were thinking with that one. But oh dear, there's still a final elemental to face down. And even after all that, there's still the little matter of the Mandarin himself to deal with. But Tony fights madness with wisdom. You are Li Mei! And so our movie ends with Tony Stark buying back the controlling interest in his father's company. Stark Enterprises is mine. And Howard Stark regaining the business he started. Two, I'm handing control of the company over to my father. was the Invincible Iron Man. But truth be told, I can't put this one into the House of Love. This movie is unlikable. Oh, the story's okay. Rich kid uncovers ancient evil, has to put it back, becomes legendary hero foretold in prophecy. Mixing Iron Man's actual comic book origin, and you'd seem to have a great movie right there. So where does unlikable come into it? The characters. Tony is... Tony. But more so, Mark Warden, the voice actor for Tony in this and the Ultimate Avengers movies, really can't seem to do anything but cool, and his attempts at emotion are essentially shouting. Howard Stark comes across as distant and aloof. Rhodey's second act freakout comes out of basically nowhere and disappears just as quickly. Even Pepper, who's bafflingly English here, is barely anything. And let's not get started on the power of love or whatever that ultimately defeats the Mandarin. On the bright side, the designs for the armors are good, the elementals are designed well, and the overall art direction is, at the very least, on a par with the other Marvel animated movies. Ultimately though, the mistake this movie made was retelling an origin whose definitive modern incarnation was to follow the same year. And while it's unfair to compare this to its live action sibling, it's inevitable that this comparison will be made, and for me, the live-action movie is the better one. So sadly, it's a dent that just won't buff out. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better animated movies. So long, folks!
Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there!